Um, my name is Manjit Singh. Uh, I work for, uh, there we go. Sort of. I work for uh, Booz Allen Hamilton. Um, those of you who caught Jared's session yesterday, he talked about fire and screaming kids and all sorts of other unpleasant things. And then talked about, and talked about our cloud broker platform. But it occurred to me that some of you may not even know who Booz Allen is. And as we intend to be, very active in this community and partners of yours as we try to develop the school and kind of progress it into its next evolution. I thought it was important that, uh, that people understand our view and our philosophy on something like Manage IQ. Um, when we went to gig home structure, we had people walking up to our, our booth and asking us why a law firm was interested in cloud management. Who's Alan Hamilton was a technology consulting firm. Um, we are a firm that believes that there is great opportunity that lies in our ability to eliminate human interaction from the things that we do. You know, really fully automating every aspect of systems management and management. And that's not so that we can go in and tell our clients, you can put all this head down, you know, and have all these efficiencies. It's so that people like us can focus on making the applications better, making the data better, and not have to worry about spinning up a new server manually, or killing a process when you're restarting a process when it's core dumped or died. And so that's something that, over the past seven years, we've been working on uh, pretty aggressively. We started, uh, before cloud computing was even coined as a term, trying to make this happen. And we were using really rudimentary tools. You guys remember like Tickle Talk, the expect tool set, <laughs> and trying to script system interaction and make that automation happen. And it worked, you know, it could scale up machines and it could kind of sense when it needed to, you know, scale up and scale down, but it just wasn't something that was scalable in an enterprise version. Um, and at the same time, we were, you know, having to create our own self-service portals. Our clients had these, like, highly virtualized environments that we would go in, we'd consolidate, virtualize them, um, and then they wanted to be able to push as many of those capabilities down to the user as possible. So these are all things that we've known now as, like, the five characteristics of cloud computing. But we had to create our own self-service portals because OpenStack didn't exist. A lot of the projects that created today that gives you that ability, you know, wasn't there. And so, around that time, we helped NIST create the cloud definition. We were part of that initial working group. We still go by that cloud definition pretty much everything that we do. Um, and, you know, we are constantly looking for ways to improve the systems that we deploy to our clients and deploy internally in the firm. And in, I think it was 2009, 2010 timeframe, we started talking to a small company called Manage IQ. Um, we were looking for the best cloud management tools out there. And, uh, you know, we had gone through the whole thing, CA, BMC, you know, a lot of the stuff that probably a lot of you guys have worked with before. We felt that Manage IQ was the most sophisticated tool in a price point that was just, you know, blew the competition away. And something that, from a competitive standpoint, from a value to our client standpoint, was just unmatched. And so, since that time frame, Manage IQ has been our go-to cloud management platform. We've deployed it at multiple client sites. We were extremely happy when Red Hat acquired them. Even more happy when we found out that they were going to open source it. Really kind of started to get excited about that. Um, waited patiently for a long time for that to happen. You know, like they talked about yesterday, all they talked about just how challenging it was. Um, so we're, we are, we're really, really pumped about this whole thing. Um, what we're going to talk about today is how we've leveraged Manage IQ to create a cloud broker. And we think it's something that gets us a step closer to this full, automated, uh, full automation philosophy picture vision that we've all been trying to build towards. Because it leverages tools like Manage IQ, which things you know, which I think finally gives us the ability to get a step closer to that vision. Uh, you know, Docker, OpenShift. It has all the right hooks in place to really make an enterprise that can scale. Uh, you know, when it when it needs to, and a lot of times scale before an application or even knows that it needs to scale. So we're going to talk today about our integration roadmap um, and what we intend to open source. We're essentially taking our seven years of research and work. We'll keep the TCLTK scripts. I don't think anybody wants those. <laughs> and we're giving it all to the community. So this represents thousands of dollars of our own research and development. Um, really, it's something, to be honest, that is new to Booz Allen. So in a lot of cases, we're going to be looking for you guys to kind of help us. You know, we normally talk about doing the right pull requests on GitHub and kind of the right way to engage through talk.manageiq.org. And so we're going to be, you know, try to be best stewards as we can here. But we're excited about it. Um, we hope that you guys, you know, take this opportunity to help kind of guide us and uh, are, are excited to partner with us. And if there's anything that you think uh, we should be doing better, please let us know. But with that, 
with that, I'm going to turn it over to Chris and Jerry, and they're going to talk about the broker framework and what our plans are for it. Great. I think you all pretty much met me, so first, go ahead. Yeah, my name's uh, Chris Ample. I'm the <coughs> tech lead in our Austin, Texas team, uh, focused on uh, cloud broker. And fortunate enough where myself and a, a team in Austin and Virginia are focused 100% on building out this application, contributed to manage IQ, and uh, seeing it move forward. So, who's out and we're not afraid to, well, let's, let's go for it. So the next phase is the Project Jellyfish. Most of y'all were here, well, some of y'all yesterday were here to uh, see where we are today and what we're releasing this month. So I just want to quickly kind of go over that architecture. So we have, right now, multiple components. We've got a, a marketplace that's in Drupal. We have a... Uh, an engine that we're using service mix, JBoss, JVPM, we're using Manage IQ, we're using Chef, um, and we're using all these components. We deliberately built this architecture so that it's easy to scale and we have the ability to add other components. So things we don't know today, things that we're learning, you know, we want to add something new. You know, we, we've done examples of uh, we, we provisioned uh, SharePoint instances through Microsoft 365. So that was something else. So we built this architecture of these multiple, multiple components, multiple open source components, with the idea of uh, making it so that we're kind of future-proofing things. And it's worked well. It's worked well. We've used it with clients. We've kind of road tested it. Um, and that's what we've released today. So having said that, We have some pain points, basically, with that setup. This John Mark gave me his, his thing, and I think I'll go back to the end, the, the manual. So too many components. It, it has, well, for us, it's, we're able to work with it. it when we talk to clients about it, um, it has the appearance of being confusing. You know, you've got five components, you know, and then you add chef, you've got a six component or a puppet. It just starts sounding like there are a lot of pieces to maintain, a lot of pieces to install. Too many languages. So we have Drupal, PHP, Service Mix, and Java, Manage IQ, Ruby. It, it again kind of adds that complexity. So when we go talk to people about it, about setting up a broker, it, it really gives this appearance of like, okay, now I need a Java person, now I need a PHP, I need a Drupal expert. It gets a little complex. Um, and, and we want to try to deal with that. So also, you know, with the current marketplace, we still have non-admins getting into Manage IQ or cloud forms. And that's fine, uh, but our goal is to have and empower other users to be able to go in and who are, I'm the product, project manager. I want to go into Marketplace, I want to order services. I want to fire up the JIRA instance. I don't want to have to go in into Manage IQ, which is much more admin, you know. Um, the UI is much more geared to that. So we have some features right now that are, you know, if I want to go and add memory, I have to do that. If I want to stop an instance, I have to go into Manage IQ, I have to go into Cloud Forms to do that. So we'd like to limit that. Master of record confusion for catalog and chargeback quotas. So um, right now, I think somebody brought it up a question yesterday is, in my Drupal marketplace, I have to go set pricing. Uh, I set pricing in Manage IQ for the actual usage, and I go to marketplace to set the pricing for there. And that causes some confusion because I have to do it in two places. Um, same thing with chargebacks and quotas. So uh, one of the big things that we've added, and we talked about yesterday again too, was that project-based costing and quotas are really important to a lot of our customers. So when I go create a project and I then order services against that project, I need to make sure I'm within either a resource quota or I'm in a dollar amount. And some of that information is stored in the marketplace. And then we go back to Manage IQ Cloud Forms to get the actual chargebacks and to present that info. It's, it's a little confusing because it's being managed in multiple spots. And we kind of, we want to start eliminating those things. 
So this is uh, Project Jellyfish Phase 2. So in New Zealand, we're not afraid of really taking a metaphor and just beating it to death. <laughs> so this is our April 2015 release. Uh, jellyfish, their second phase of development is afraid. It's fear. your guess. Fear? Uh, your guess is mine. You can't say it either. You can't say it either, that's right. <coughs> Okay, so a big part of this new release is a new marketplace. So we've, we've redesigned the marketplace, we're using a new UI, we're making it separate. Ruby on Rails, kind of eliminated additional language, make it much more aligned for the future to, um, <coughs> to integrate with Manage IQ at some point, or connect more closely. Uh, we're using Twitter Bootstrap. I know I would like to talk to you all some about the advantages you're using uh, uh, was Pattern, Pattern Fly, thank you. Some of the you know, possible reasons maybe we should use that instead. Um, so, and I'll show you some of our, our designs for that and what we've done so far. So we've already started this process. Uh, we've got a unified service catalog. So instead of having these two catalogs, one in the Drupal marketplace, one in cloud forms, we want to unify that and just pull that information through APIs. Um, so greater visibility and control of VMs in the marketplace. So that's kind of addressing that other thing I talked about, where you know, we, we're, we're putting a lot of users, um, forcing them to go into managing <coughs> to do some things. And it's users that you probably don't want to go in there. You know? So we want to just, ch we're changing it so you can see more information and you can do basic functionality. Let's take care of 80% of just basic functionality. I want to stop my you know, VM. Um, I want to see kind of some usage based on that. Things that I would have to go to Manage IQ, but now I want to display that in the marketplace. Uh, search for services based on requirements, the service wizard. So one thing we hear a lot about is, okay, I can go into the catalog and I can search for things like, uh, I want to do Apache server, you know, um, I want to set up a, a, a web instance with three-tiered LAMP stack, you know, these kind of blueprint things. But a lot of times, a lot of the users don't know that yet. So instead of asking them to search for like a specific thing, give them questions. So we have, you know, say 10 questions. You answer that question. What's your security level? What's the type of application you're doing? And based on those, on the right side or the bottom, change, filter out what catalog items they can choose. So this is a big thing that's come up a lot um, from our customers. You know, so kind of a little more guided shopping experience. Uh, I've got some screenshots. I don't know if you can see some of it. Looks much more modern UI. You know, it, here's the landing page to have traditional kind of marketing type pieces. You know, learn more about us, contact. Here's what we're going to do. Uh, <coughs> initial page, dashboard. Kind of a standard uh, dashboard with nice things to see your, your, budget, your budget totals based on product, your usage, the health of your environment. You know, which, which projects do you have? So we're very organizing things around projects all the way through. Because that seems to how our, a lot of the customers and users we're addressing think about it. So you can see kind of various health of it, costing, uh, status, and usage. Catalog, a much uh, nicer looking catalog uh, with a full set of services. Uh, Nice display, nice organization, faceted search going down the left, so I can kind of drill in and select different items. Um, same thing, search, search results. Um, and this is kind of where we're gonna have the similar thing. I don't know that I have a slide for it, but what I talked about for the requirements, you know, for the questions, similar type things, ask questions, get your results on the bottom. Order detail, you know, nice kind of Amazon-like experience. You know, I go in to select something. Here are my options here. I've got plans for it, uh, descriptions. Um, you know, and we, we, in our existing marketplace too, there are a number of options that we, that we ask typically. So when we provision something, we do it through combination of when I create the project, I fill out a form. And in that, I can set things like, hey, this is going to be a production system or I'm going to have uh, dev test production. I'm going to have uh, this is all you know a high security level or versus low security level, 
And then when you go in and order things, you also get options. You know, hey, either I want to put this in AWS, I want this in OpenStack, you know, where do I want to provision this? Um, you know, what size, kind of the AWS experience, I want a large, medium, small, uh, all of these type questions kind of go on this screen um, here in the next So the combination of the project and my options here define what gets sent to manage IQ when actually to provision. So we use the combination to do it. And that's all kind of shown yesterday. I think Normal showed some of the JSON messaging that goes back and forth. So that messaging is very, very much the same. Uh, cart, here's our cart display. Um, what we also have, you can sort of see it up on the right. It's, it's a little small, but where, you know, the quota based. So in my cart, I could have a dollar amount that I can order against, or it could be, we have seen instances where they want it resource based. So you have you know, 20 CPUs, you have X amount of RAM, you have this much storage, and you then can order up against that storage. Or uh, somebody brought up yesterday, um, they have a requirement with Yale that it's more time-based, too. So I think with the code, a modification could be made if you all had an instance where you want to apply this that was time-based. So I don't want to, um, I, I have one I'm setting a retirement date based on the end of the semester, but also they can't order anything up to that point also. So there's like a requirements quota rules that happen here that we're trying to keep as flexible as possible. You know? and, and all of this stuff, too. We're going to open source this. You know, we're looking for y'all's input in this and to kind of help us and guide us on things that you see or other practices that would um, help us develop this in a way that will work for more people. Manage your projects. So I'm seeing a project overview. All my different projects that I'm, uh, that I'm, I, that I'm managing at this moment, you know, the health, uh, if there are any issues. Again, very project-based individual project management. So within a project, here are the people I have assigned to that. So one thing that we have right now that we'll definitely keep is collaboration on the workflow. So this is kind of outside of Manage IQ, but it's, it's when I create a project, I want to say here are the people that are here going to help me fill out this form. Here are the people who are going to be on the project. Uh, here are the people who can order and buy the role I give them. They can either order services or they can view kind of the project or they're, maybe they're just the, um, you know, like the accounting person, just need to see how much, uh, how much we spent so far on that or get some chargeback information for that. So I can manage kind of those users here um, and see those. But I guess the other piece with that too is not only just what they can do once it's provisioned and up and active, but I need somebody to help me fill out this request. So we have a project request form that has a security component. Describe your security environment. Maybe I've got, I don't know, you know, I'll have, I'll ask Normal, you know, help, help me fill this out. So I add him to that and we can kind of collaborate on filling out this project request. So something that, that we've seen in practice. No problem, Chris. Thank you. <laughs> Same thing, project request form. Uh, all of the building, obviously, where we can kind of customize this, you know, approvals. Okay. So that's kind of uh, what the marketplace looks like, you know, from an overview standpoint. We think it looks really good. We're trying to make it um, in ways that will, one, be effective, but also fit into the overall environment. And again, we are open for uh, yeah, so just to add to that, you know, I really think, you know, so the term broker is really important because the functionality added, it's, it's not to replace the UI of call folder and remain in my You'll still have all of that. It's really more about being like that third party person and, and being and helping to make decisions, being more like an orbit's like experience. It's, it's probably more about UX than UI at this point. And so the different modules we add are, are things that you really want to have in, in, a, in more of an administrative tool. We don't want it to look like a tool at all, really. We want it to look like more like a portal or um, you know, some, some sort of storefront, if you will. The project management stuff and you know, what you're able to actually modify from like VM's perspective, start and stop. We haven't, you know, whatever we can control, great. You know, I think we haven't quite decided, you know, at this level, at this abstraction, how much of that control are we going to push up versus just putting a link and having them log into 
uh, like Manage IQ, for example. So those are things we're still working through. Mm -hmm. So outside of the marketplace, other ways we're looking to contribute for this next phase that I can't say the name of. Um, rewrite the engine in Ruby. So we're, we're addressing uh, some, of the, some of the issues I talked about at the points. You know, what, we have all these, these different components uh, that have that appearance of being complex and these different requirements. Now we had Java in the past. So we're looking at either just plain rewriting it in Ruby or uh, getting rid of the engine as much as possible and really handling that um, just right through the marketplace and manage IQ. Yeah, and then now as the APIs will manage IQ approve, the, the need for our engine as it is today it pretty much goes away. And, you know, I mean, we've talked about that. So you know, yeah. we'll definitely be contributing on the APIs because now we can just have direct integration. It's much more clean. Yeah. yeah, so the engine in the past kind of handled is that middle man you know, took the, the JSON order files from Marketplace, transformed <coughs> that, did the right calls to uh, cloud forms in the past, you know, manage IQ. Uh, it also did a little transformation, but uh, we'd like to get rid of all that. Uh, another thing we do is, through our contacts and relationships with Booz Allen, encourage and work with other cloud service providers to be active in the community. And so we want, you know, a plug-in for Azure, let's say. Let's get Microsoft involved and use our contacts to help get them engaged to do the writing and the maintaining of that and contributing that part. So that's a big way we think we can contribute you know, through our existing relationships. Uh, Google, uh, Amazon, the same sort of thing. Ah, okay, phase three. So that's Medusa, that's a lot easier to say. That's phase three of Jellyfish <coughs> development. And we're looking right now at the six-month uh, release cycle, so October. So really, this is focused kind of on integration. So what we'd like to do is much have much tighter integration with Manage IQ. So again, addressing all these separate con components. So we could be, are we a separate install of Manage IQ that has the broker kind of wrapped into it? Are we a plugin, like a UI plugin that you can go and enable the broker capabilities. Um, that's the type of thing we're, we're aiming for. I don't know, I think we're still trying to figure out the best way and work with everybody to do that. But that's kind of the end goal. You know, you go out and you install a Manage IQ that's the broker version. Or it's like, I've downloaded, I've installed Manage IQ, now I want to bring in, uh, I want to enable the broker function. I think that's where we're kind of looking to see how we can <coughs> work together, but that's our ultimate goal. Uh, template Builder. So with the Template Builder, allowing, one of the things we see and hear a lot of is, um, okay, I can order individual services, but I want to build, you know, like a cloud formation. I, I want to kind of design these systems a little more easier. You know, how can we, what can we create as sort of a, a, a tool to help people design that from the, from the UI, regardless of where that is, and have that get pushed to cloud forms. Um, so, uh, you know, basically kind of a type of cloud formation. And we see it, we hear it a bunch. And that might be sooner than release three, actually. So this is, this is a good broker marketplace kind of thing where folks can come in and kind of create their own service, their own template. Even within an enterprise, they want that capability. And it's really good at that level to do that. Um, you know, I think there's a couple other tools that have attempted to do this. I think if you go to WriteScale and kind of see how they did their write scripts and now the whole marketplace, kind of similar to that, but at a higher level, I think, is really what we're aiming for. Uh, intelligence search and compare module. So we want to um, uh, we want to have things that can go and search and compare services a lot a lot easier. You know, so you can do a comparison, you know, with the existing. I can compare against, uh, you know, recent AWS charges, and much better way of picking services and then seeing a price comparison. Very again, orbits like. Yeah. yeah, and this is not what's in your catalog. So this is again, it, it's really good for this category of UI UX because it's it's what it will be meant to do is, you know, just what's available or at least what we can with data we can get our hands on. So we'll have some of our analytics folks. Out and help us 
trying to build the engine around that. Uh, mobile app. So again, where this may or may not be that phase, it might be the phase earlier, uh, but uh, you know, a mobile app to check on my services, check on my project, uh, access, do some base type functionality. You know, with that app. And we'll have a prototype of the app um, in the next couple months, and we haven't decided how we're going to push that out, but we will be pushing that out to the community too. So yep. we'll to the okay. uh, fully integrated engine components. So this is kind of what I was alluding to earlier, where uh, you know, we want to get rid of the engine. It's just timing. So either we can do it this next phase, or it might be the third phase, but we'd like to completely get rid of it. At the minimum, we're going to change it to Ruby on Rails and uh, have some sort of handler message bus, you know, like that, just to simplify. But goal, end goal is to get rid of it. Contribute on multi-tenancy LDAP federation. Um, something that, you know, ways of us directly engaging and helping, you know, code, uh, and contribute pieces on that. I mean, that's something we see a lot where we want federation, federated access. Um, you know, we have instances in the past where we've got a government client that they want to, enact, in essence, be a provider to multiple agencies, and they need to then connect to their different AD environments. Um, we, it comes up. Does free IP do that already? Or? What's, I'm sorry? Does free IP do that already? Um, I, we, we haven't been able to get anything running very well. So maybe there's some information that would help us with that already. Yeah. Contributing on chargeback model and reporting. Very similar type of thing. Um, you know, I know y'all are working on that. That's probably in y'all's roadmap uh, as part of the Manage IQ community, but it's something that we, you know, <laughs> we'd like more robust chargeback reporting for sure. Yeah. That's really kind of a good description of roadback, but I expect a lot of questions from y'all on, on this, you know, about what we're doing. I'm really excited about, about where you guys are going with That's a very nice introduction. So are there suggestions and ideas on how we can, especially as we, you know, if we've got some idea on that phase three to integrate, that we can kind of use some of that architecture as we go along, are there initial thoughts on how that might look from y'all? <clears throat> I'd like to see it one. No, we probably need to have some sort of breakout session before we can start the Digging through. Yeah. Okay. yeah, I think a lot of it comes down to the details of what, what each of those pieces are going to be. And then we can figure out you know, what the impacts are in different areas. Um, but like one thing I was thinking of is we are talking about the you know, customizing a catalog item. Yeah, right. right. Yeah. And that could either mean here's some existing images that I want to put together in some way, but it could also mean here's a juice image that I want to decorate with more things, right? Right. And that's maybe like an image factory piece where you have to go build a, a brand new image or it's something, you know, post customization or what, whatever that means. Um, so it's levels of granularity of how, how deep do you want to customize something? Yeah. And how much of that is pushed to the user? To yeah, it probably um, depends on the type of user for that also, for sure. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and maybe that differs <coughs> per installation, too. I don't know. But those That's types of things will probably come out with deeper discussion. Good. Yes. Given the modularity discussions that uh, you guys yesterday, yes. uh, would you consider becoming, say, a Manage IQ plugin? Over time, or well, and, and that's kind of the, the rub I'm kind of trying to get at is, is that the way? And if, if that's that's one of the things we talked about for sure, you know, whatever, you know, we're open to figuring out that. You know, is that what you think? Kind of is that how it feels to you for knowing how to sure? Um, maybe because you wouldn't have to be. If you became a plug-in. You could also have the flexibility of saying, well, in this version of the product, we're the only plug-in or we're a plug yeah. with only a few other things instead yeah. of a full-blown managed IQ. Right. And then you can configure it, you know, maybe in some use cases you want the full-blown thing, some not, uh, and maybe configure it through uh, RDAC or something to sure. expose what certain parts of it. Um, in general, I mean, you probably don't want to carry code that, that doesn't really 
have value, but you probably want to be carrying code that kind of um, is, is the business value that you're building on top of the, the, the managed execution kind of right. structure. Right. So you probably don't want to duplicate kind of building out the infrastructure and no, carrying it going forward. Yeah, we figured it out. Yeah, yeah. And that's one of the other things that I was um, alluding to yesterday is that <coughs> if, we, if, if over time we can modularize manager IQ um, into really a lot of different modules, um, then conceivably you really could build a, a cloud broker just out of composing pieces of yeah. manager IQ. Yeah. That would be really cool. That would. What um, kind of follow Oh, Norm, you had a question? Oh, no, go ahead. Oh, okay. So one of the things that um, we had a challenge with is uh, in our first iteration, um, there's no API programmatic way to uh, add users, uh, change their groups, uh, change their rollback, the, the RBAC within platforms or what tags they're associated with. Um, so we still have a manual process where, you know, at the project creation, that tag <coughs> needed to be manually worked. The tag and the groups and the users will be manually set in the manager queue. Um, I know with the addition with the IPA, that might be somewhat solved, but um, is there, just give an idea out there for the community, but if we can have some more um, programmatic way to change how, how users are organized, um, that might help with integration with other tools that want well, to federate those users all the way through. So is that API on yeah. top of existing functionality, or do you see that as new functionality? I don't know. Um, probably existing functionality in the sense that right now you can still get like a list of users or um, groups, but you can't modify them, I don't believe. Oh, yeah. and Just work with uh, Alberto in the back there. Um, he, okay. He's kind of the gatekeeper of the REST API. Yeah. So you really... Um, yeah, with the new REST API, obviously, we went through a first pass to get as much as we could. Yeah. Yeah. Now yeah. that we have it, everybody's like, I need everything. I know, yeah. I know. Like, we, you know, we welcome all the input we can on that. Yeah, um, so we almost eliminated every manual task in our system in the first iteration, except for the initial kind of, yeah, creation of the users and the accounts and things like that. Yeah, that should be pretty straightforward. Yeah, right? the, the knee jerk on that one is get into LDAP. I mean, you, we could extend it, but yeah, let's extend the REST full interface. Right. But you're talking about a single location where you've got your users that you can manage it and it almost feels like we're not the consumer. I mean, you own that data, you really don't. The list of users, like, I mean, we want to use it. Right, but, but it's like associating that with that group with a tag, for example. Right. I mean, the role-based definition of the group yeah. is still in cloud forms and will still be oh, yeah, the yeah, yeah. association and that's, that's what he's looking for. Yeah. But that yeah. part is, is not about IP. That part, yeah. like the IP, it's about linking a user to a group that matches in the cloud form, so there's still that definition. Yeah. yeah, and if, if through IPA you can have it so that it dynamically s selects an attribute from IPA to, to create that group, that's great. Then that's the route we would yes. take. Yeah. But if there's another way, or if, there, if you guys are thinking about another way, then you, you can do custom attributes through IPA, um, which, which are I think highly recommended because then you can have it's one layer. Well, in the nice free IP UI or CLI, you have like, you know, your name and your last name and stuff, and like your car or driver's license number. But you also have the, you know, project code. Yeah, project thingy or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, okay. And there's a nice public manual that does all this too. Mm -hmm. um, another question I had was um, what are the big challenges do you think? knowing what we have today to make this work. I mean, we can do a lot of the UI and all those pieces, but what are the, what are the challenges do y'all foresee with kind of where we are? I mean, I, I, the pluggable architecture discussion yesterday was great, and it seemed like there was a lot of things, it sounded great, but we're still kind of early stage with some of this stuff for sure. Um, any, anything that kind of jumps out that we're gonna face kind of is it? Well, I, I think kind of building out a pluggable architecture on both the UI and the backend side is going to be challenging and it'll take time. And I think kind of the more input we have, you know, in the community on that, um, both at the requirements level, you know, the requirements level, at the design level, and at the implementation level, you know, I think we'll need help on, on all those areas to kind of really make it robust and, and you know, get into the future. 
specifically on that question, um, I think the service catalog. Yeah. Uh, there's a concept that it seems like there are three or four different implementations of that coming from different angles, whether we support heat confirmation, right. um, whether uh, we have services internally, how exactly those line up. So I think that one key component, I, I see that okay. you are talking about implementing your own as well. No, we, no we're trying to integrate oh, with that. Oh, yeah, I didn't yeah. mean to sound yeah. opinionated, but also in Puppet, Puppet as well, that came yeah. on is like how do you leverage their yeah. definitions of the conglomerate there. I think that uh, is a key component that if we can get that integrated, and that will give you a lot more freedom in terms of sure. what you want to offset as a plug-in yeah. side, and also what you want to have as external. And that's, that, that seems like right there, and that's a very big, um, and that's work that needs to be done. So again, that's a, a great collaboration effort. So collaborate, get it done right, and manage IQ up front, it'll help us with our boat integration. You might end up with yeah. external too, yep. and just make sure it meets your needs, but that seems like the biggest um, the biggest yeah. joining part between us. The, um, the RESTful API, getting the, yeah. we that's just that not work. Yeah. And yeah. even if we went on our own and didn't collaborate, and then a couple months later you said, let's collaborate there, yeah. it would work, it, yeah. and it'd be great. Um, it just wouldn't get done a couple months later, right? <laughs> but that, um, that one lynch point is that service definition catalog, it would be great if we could make sure that okay. Either both of our definitions work together or we use the same definition. Perfect. Okay. Do question? Yes. Uh, I, I work for a solution provider. We have our own managed services and cloud services on data centers. And we're actually in a hunt for a good uh, broker uh, huh? you know, product. So you may want to talk. <laughs> but the two things that when we look for uh, are ease of integration with our own services. Yeah. Which are really very important. We, we don't have a lot of developers, right? Yeah. You know, although we can hire, but still. So that's uh, one. And the other uh, piece we look for is the workload mobility. Okay. Customers yes. are looking for that. Yeah. Uh, I have my Hyper VM, I want to change it to VMware. I want to have my KVM, I want to change it to. Yep. There are, sort of, there are resources out there, there are tools, but, you know, to be part of this whole engine broker. <laughs> That's a good point. We have thought through that. That's a great broker type function, and it would flow really nicely, and it would fit really nicely in that arena. So we, we have talked about that. I, that'd be great if we could maybe get some thoughts on that. We're getting close. It's, it's really you know paper and whiteboard right now. We've looked at all the tools that are yeah. out there. Nothing. We looked really, at a lot of products. Yeah. And, and so workload right. mobility is not. <laughs> it might be something that we end up writing ourselves, or, or we can find some sort of nice you know, open source tool. Like Only one, one company claimed it can do it. Right. And you all know who that is. <laughs> <laughs> we hear it. Well, we hear that that request. Um, yeah. Frequently. Yeah. And we we see it also. I mean, but it's very peer to peer, right? I mean, yeah. you know, it's to your points from point A to point B, and there's nothing that can generalize the use case. And so it's it's tricky in that sense that yeah. it requires hands oh. to be able to do it. Um, so I mean, but, but we see it. It's, it's there. And I know that the Fed has done. Looking at various technologies to help solve that use case. So there's, you know, initiatives in the, you know, in the open yeah. source that are there to try to understand what's the output format that's, you know, you're trying in the input format. So from that standpoint, but you know, to your point, the workflow of the series catalog of the transformation itself is still a very proprietary. Will sure. still be a very proprietary approach. Well, uh, like we said, you know, we would like to. Uh, we've kind of already started some of this with this collaboration here, but. Um, find a ways and framework to kind of keep that going ongoing so we can kind of work closely. I mean, we have talk, but we're always looking for other ways to, you know, uh, communicate and share our architecture and get feedback. You know, yeah. yeah, the one thing I wanted to ask, and we don't have the answer here, we can break out or whatever, but um, I would really like to know if there's anything that's a stumbling block or a roadblock okay. to you to contributing. Sure. Because um, I really want to break down all those barriers so we can, you know, get yeah. more people contributing. Um, so anywhere you're seeing maybe the communication isn't working or, okay. uh, you know, so one area. Use, we need something specifically documented, you know, that would be really helpful. One area that probably isn't of uh, a lot of interest because it's not technical is the whole legal aspect. Just sucks. Like, probably <laughs> some of you have been through this, but yeah. there's a lot of confusion over which licensing structure to use, GPL, MIT, and there's all these like, very passionate debates around it. It would be good, and there's some content out there but it would be good if people could just, you know, whatever your orders or what you share, 
if you could share with us, you know, kind of the approach that you took and like the justifications oh. for that, because that that is something that is like probably the biggest stumbling block. I'd say. I think I've talked more <coughs> about licensing here than technology, and it seemed like you know talking to people. Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> well, you know, I can give a quick overview if you want right now. We we wanted to go with Apache. Um, the Apache license because it, um, it's like the MIT license, but it also um, gives you patent protection as well. Um, but we couldn't do that because there was some GPL code that we're using. So we're currently dual license with Apache GPL. Um, when we get the GPL um, libraries out of our um, out of our system, then the plan is just to go and pull Apache. But right now, for I don't know something. Whatever period of time, year, two years, three years, we're going to be dual licensed, and then someone will split off. Okay. I guess all we have. So, so Thank you very much. much. What we would like to do now is just just action items here. Uh, a few breakout sections around API, catalog, and UI. Um, you know, so, we'll yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Very much. Thanks. Hopefully, uh, so we might just start a little bit.